Today we're going to make a classic. Remember the main. For this drink, you're going to need a coupe glass, a graduated double jigger, measuring spoons, a bar spoon, a vegetable peeler, a Hawthorne strainer, and a mixing glass. This drink uses rye whiskey, sweet vermouth, cherry liqueur, absinthe, and a lemon or lime peel for garnish. This drink got its start in a Havana bar. Charles H. Baker Jr. was inspired by the turbulent events of Batista's first coup in 1933. In those uncertain times, with power changing hands through violent means, he recalled to Baker what it must have been like 35 years earlier, when Cuba was freeing itself from the shackles of Spanish colonial rule. A different turbulent time. The USS Maine was an American ship that in 1898 blew up in Havana Harbor, killing 258 crew members. The cause of the explosion was dubious, and continues to be debated by historians. But the American Yellow journalists of the day used the event to drum up anti-Spanish fervor in the U.S., which helped galvanize public support behind America's three-month involvement in the Spanish-American War. One of the fronts of the war was in Cuba. And as reported by the New York Times two months after the explosion, the catchy chant that became the rally cry was, to hell with Spain, remember the Maine. The same way that the revolutionary Cuban battle cry, Cuba Libre, became a drink, Baker used the American battle cry, Remember the Maine, to try and capture the spirit of the first successful Cuban revolution in a glass. He put the cocktail in print in 1939 in his book, The Gentleman's Companion. In his recipe, Baker left open the possibility of using a lime peel for garnish, as opposed to the lemon. He said either will work, so feel free to sub in whichever citrus you like better. The lime twist will help accent the absinthe, and it's interesting to try them back to back. But for me, lemon is the way to go, because it pairs so well with the rye. For the cherry liqueur, the most famous choice is cherry herring, but there are others out there. Whichever one you choose, it's a bottle you should have lying around in case you want to make a blood and sand at a moment's notice. With this cherry liqueur, I like using two teaspoons, but Baker gives you the option of using only one instead. The drink is a lot like a funky and complex Manhattan. It's rye and sweet vermouth at two to one, plus a couple little extras. At first, I was worried that the absinthe would be too overpowering, but it's just enough to give it that earthy finish. The cherry liqueur is like a booster shot at the sweet vermouth, which helps create a wonderful balance. But before that balance can be achieved, the drink takes your taste buds on a wild ride. Let's we'll start by chilling our glass. Fill it with ice and water and set it aside. Next, we're gonna measure an ounce and a half of rye. Add that to the mixing glass. Measure three quarter ounce of sweet vermouth. Add that to the mixing glass. Measure two teaspoons of cherry liqueur. Add that to the mixing glass. With this measuring spoon, that's two pours. Measure half a teaspoon of absinthe, add that to the mixing glass. Add ice and stir it well to chill it down and give it some dilution. Dump the ice and water from your coupe glass, then strain the contents of your mixing glass into your chilled cocktail glass. Cut a wide swath of lemon peel or lime peel, being careful not to cut into the white pith. Express the oils of your lemon twist over the drink, rub it along the rim of your glass, and drop it in for garnish. And there you have it, a Rough Rider cocktail if there ever was one. Remember the main. Salud. Click here for more videos. Be sure to subscribe and check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.